Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We are here live in Barcelona, Spain for HP Discover Europe. Um, this, again, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, and uh, our next guest here, uh, Scott Weller, VP General Manager, HP Technology Services, CUBE alumni, I've been on many times. Scott, great to have you uh, here kicking off yeah. HP Discover Europe. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, John, appreciate it. Um, you know, Europe, Europe is a big part of the business of HP, obviously. Uh, it, the presence here is pretty fantastic. Barcelona is a great city, a lot of action. You know, we're kicking off day one of the show here. Um, so first, first tell the folks out there kind of what's the, what's the spirit here? What is the vibe? And, and, and in Europe, what's the action like from a, from, a, from a content standpoint, from a technology yeah. standpoint? And what are customers uh, here interested in? Yeah, I, uh, so first of all, this event uh, gets better and better every time and uh, the footprint of the event, the venue itself, the kind of uh, content that HP shows up with is just better every time. And uh, you know, I hope if there are people uh, local uh, to Barcelona, they'll make, make time to, to come out here. Yeah, uh, I would say that um, in Europe, uh, the kind of uh, people, the kind of customers that show up at these events tend to be uh, more senior, uh, uh, they are, uh, uh, more in the uh, C-level ranks, and uh, of course there's always technical people as well. Um, and uh, you know, this year we've got so many announcements, it's, uh, it's, it's almost hard to count them. And uh, one of the things that I'm really proud about is, uh, is, is some of the things that we've announced, in particular our, uh, our HP flexible capacity that um, I think is going to be a, ba a real game changer in the market. Dave and I have uh, always loved to talk about what's kind of trending, what's emerging, kind of, and what's relevant in terms of the minds of the, the yeah. customer. We walked into this, the pavilion here, kind of where we have the cube, and you know, front and center is cloud on the right, and uh, big data when you right. walk in, and then inside, yeah. it's kind of like under the hood. <laughs> it's almost like <laughs> as you explore the, the car, if you will, to use the car metaphor, yeah. you can see under the, under the hood, storage virtualization, three-par storage, converged infrastructure, all those great stuff. Right. So I got to ask you, you know, cloud is obviously hot. We were just at Amazon reInvent conference, right. mm -hmm. and, and the number one thing that we hear from customers and from, from people in the industry is cloud has now crossed over the chasm Okay, and we've talked about this before, yeah. um, and now as mainstream worse, moving beyond tire kicking uh, to right. full deployment architectures. Absolutely. So again, <laughs> we always yeah. talk about services is the sweet spot, so, right. so how is that impacting? Give us a quick update on, from your standpoint before we don't jump into the announcements. What's some of the high level uh, things going on in the market that's in, relative to your, your organization on, on mm -hmm. the technical services side? Well, you're absolutely right. The, uh, this idea that uh, cloud is interesting but not for me, we're well past that. So, so uh, you know, the, the big question for, for all of our customers, that, uh, the ones I speak to, is how do I get the right balance of workloads both inside and outside the firewall? And how do I make that a mainstream piece of my operation? And so what you see here at this event is all of these technologies and services that enable that, that's what we call hybrid cloud or hybrid delivery, where you don't walk away from your traditional IT where that makes sense, but you do adopt into either private cloud or public cloud, and you get the workloads in the right place on the right kind of uh, compute, the right kind of storage, and then all the services that, uh, you know, customers are all in different places on this journey, so it can be everything from advice to actually doing the implementation, uh, and then to the runtime support, which is my business. Now, yeah. uh, Scott, we've talked about this again, uh, but I want to yeah. bring back the subject of the hybrid cloud. When we talk to cus customers in the Wikibon community, the yeah. vast majority say they're pursuing a hybrid cloud strategy. <laughs> or, or yeah. I mean, if you look at it, it's got to be 75 to 80% say it's either a hybrid or primarily a private cloud strategy. Right. Only about 10% say they're pursuing a public cloud strategy. Right. So, uh, first of all, is that what you see? Yes. Uh, and, and then, uh, I want, you to help us square this circle, because as John said, we were just at reInvent, mm -hmm. and the head of Amazon reInvent, Andy Jassy, he's got a great story, but he puts up this pie chart and he says, here's, he calls you guys the old guard, you and, mm -hmm. and all your competitors sure. in the traditional enterprise. Yeah. He says, here's their view of the world. They think that most customers are going to stay with you know, hybrid or, or private. Here's our view of the world. We see the world as mostly a public cloud. Sure. It's a completely different pie chart, sure. different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Help us square that circle. What do you see and, and what gives you confidence that your view of the world is the one that's going to predominate? Well, I mean, I think it's almost, uh, it's almost self-evident. I mean, it's easy enough if you've got no presence in the data center uh, to be talking about how everything is public cloud or will be there uh, in the very near term, and it's simply not true. 
I mean, any real business with real uh, workloads that have been built out over the years have got to have a cogent, well thought through, planned uh, approach to wor moving workloads outside the firewall. And that's not to say that you know there's anything uh, you know magical about doing that. I think everyone understands that there's sort of the mystery of cloud is gone. It's really about how do I use all of these tools in the right balance and use them effectively. And the reality is, is that there's a migration that's happening right now and uh, there's a very long tail on this because in the end, businesses have to both be agile, there's no question, but you've got to keep what you've got going, running. It's got, you know, your business has to continue while you make these transitions. So I'm not a, I'm not a believer in that view. I, I would say my, clearly hybrid is there and this is not, this is not a symptom in any way of, of the business that we happen to be in. This is the reality of our customers every day. So Scott, last week I was in New York City hosting a customer roundtable, and there were a lot of folks in the, in the session that were doing capacity planning. And their right. big frustration was that they, they had to buy ahead of demand, they bought yes. too much, right. you know, yes. and, but they had no choice because they had to, especially mm -hmm. this time of year, the holiday season, they have to worry about peak demand, right. uh, and they get this asset that is underutilized sitting on the floor except yeah. for you know, a couple of months during the, right. during the season. Right. So how do you guys, as, a, as, a, as an IT you know, organization, IT supplier, address that problem? Right, so this is the classic problem of having to, uh, to build the cathedral for the big holidays, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but, but in the end, you know, so, so this is really fundamental now. So, so customers really want a lot of elasticity and they want the economics that the public cloud can offer. But for a lot of reasons, they, they need to keep their IT on premise. And so, um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. The, you know, security concerns, latency concerns, workloads that simply aren't ready. And also, a lot of customers have their own practices and policies that make a wholesale move to the cloud very difficult. And so this is where, you know, this service that we've announced, HP Flexible Capacity, is designed to offer that kind of economic model and elasticity, but allow you to address all those concerns because the gear is on your site. So what is that? Describe that in a little bit more detail. Yeah, sure. So it's a, it's a service that we offer that essentially variableizes literally any of the gear that, that HP offers, and we can also do this with competitive gear. Uh, and uh, it essentially uh, turns it into a, uh, you know, a pay-as-you-go model with a single monthly invoice and no, uh, no capital outlays. Okay, so that sounds good. I like that. Sure, yeah. uh, sign me up. H how does that work? Do you, just, do you over install assets and, so, and, and then it's, it, it, you take that risk away from uh, me? Essentially, that's right. I mean, again, you know, the customers want that elasticity, but they don't want to overpay for it. They don't want to take on a lot of complexity. They don't want lock-in and they don't want you know, to, to take on risks that can't be mitigated. And so that's where uh, we, we essentially take that into the equation and we turn it into an economic model that looks very much like public cloud with all of the benefits, uh, what I call the on-premise advantage. Scott, okay. talk about the, uh, obviously the economic um, benefits of the cloud has is, is been overhyped mm -hmm. and, re and realized with, the, sure. with some of the things you mentioned, elasticity yes. around, around the benefits there. Yeah. But can you share with the folks out there what enterprise grade means, because in, <laughs> we talk about that all the time, big data, you know, events we talk about big data, the big theme at Hadoop World and big data NYC yeah. this year is, what is enterprise grade? So up the stack, the application model around DevOps and around Agile yeah. Yeah. are talking about what's enterprise grade. Enterprise grade meaning, meaning what? I mean, you guys obviously right. have a huge enterprise. Please share with the folks what enterprise grade means. So there is, uh, that is an elusive term for <laughs> sure, and it's bantied <laughs> around. Look, you know, enterprise grade really boils down to do I have any uh, consistency and certainty into the equation, right? That's sort of at the highest level. And uh, you know, when you, have, when you have a provider who can't tell you what they're going to do when they go down, or, they, or they, uh, they have kind of like a laissez-faire attitude if there's an outage, right? That, that is not the kind of confidence that goes with the agility that we provide in our solution, right? So it's, it's about, it's about knowing what's going to happen, who does what, how does it occur, and so on. And also having some sense of the architectural resilience. Like how is this thing laid out in a way that, that, that gives me some confidence that there won't be an outage and if there is one, I know exactly what's going to happen under what time frame. 
So on the, uh, on, on the customer side, give us a taste of the flexible um, capacity uh, vision. You know, it's, it's very back to the future kind of thing. Nothing, sure. you know, the flux capacitor yeah. kind of jumps into my head, but you know, it really is the future. Sure. So, I mean, this is, is this the throttle up as you go kind of thing? I mean, obviously that's, pay as you go has been something yeah. that's been obviously pay by the drink, sure. however yeah. you want to call it, but you know, in reality, that sounds simple. Yes. Okay. Uh, right. To deploy, talk about some of the nuances around what does that mean in terms of a customer-specific use case. What take us through kind of the day in the life of someone that is leveraging this, and what what would they what do they look like, and what what's their environment sure. look like? Well, so one example is you've got a customer who's trying to replace all the desktops in their enterprise, and what they uh, want to do is uh, they, they either clear out an existing data center or build a new one, and they've got a certain schedule on which they want to replace all these desktops. Can could be thousands. Right, and so they've got to build, put in servers, install VDI software, and so on. And uh, the thing is, is that they they know that they've got a range of usage within that, but it's not anything like 100% on day one as they begin to deploy. And what we do is we essentially send in a pallet of gear, is the way to think about it. And the gear goes in, it gets installed, and there is in fact a buffer in there, and we take in the risk in that equation and let them pay by the drink. So, so the models typically are, I'm going to commit to use so much and then I'll grow beyond that. So how does HP manage its risk? So you're, you're yeah. essentially, if I'm the customer, you're saying, hey, sure. I'm HP, I'm going to take the risk on and take it away sure. from you. That's really appealing to me. Sure. How do you manage your own risk? Do you go in and do mm. capacity planning with the customer? Is that something that's yes. a collaborative part of the agreement? You can, yes. you can talk about that a little bit. I mean, these, these uh, these solutions, if you will, that are HP flexible capacity are uh, everything from a pre-built sort of blueprint approach where a customer says, yeah, that's, that's what I want exactly. But almost in every case, we've got to go in and collaborate on how to tune that model because otherwise, uh, one side takes on too much risk, the other side's paying too much. So it is a very collaborative activity that builds this solution for the customer. And, you know, we, we, but we have these sort of blueprint uh, eyes versions that customers can choose from, but, but reality is those need to be tuned to get the most out of them. So Scott, the other question I would have as a customer is, is can I get, when I want to provision capacity, I want it, you know, in an instant. So right. I, 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 talk to me about how that process occurs. Is it as mm -hmm. facile as, you know, what I would imagine on the swipe the credit card public cloud? Sure. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so absolutely the, the capacity is there. So it's, it's available immediately, but the thing is, if, uh, if the workload is, let's say, a bare metal traditional monolithic workload, the immediacy is different than if they've got a true full service sort of cloud system approach where they've got you know, a self-service provisioning and pools of resources. So, so that is the most instantaneous, but the, the capacity is there for the customer to use immediately. So it's really up to the customer how they want to Correct. deploy that. So what are you That's seeing right. in the field? Um, all of the above. I mean, that's, that again is the reality, back to your prior comment, is the reality is that there are all of these different workloads, and that is the whole reason behind our, our strategy for, for hybrid. That, that is what happens, that's the reality in the market. So essentially, you're recreating the, the perception, if you will, or the, the actual uh, experience of, of what we perceive to be a, a public cloud correct. Yes. in a private environment. That's right, that's okay. correct. Now yeah. talk about the hybrid piece. How does that fit in what you're seeing? Well, so, you know, uh, three years ago, I would, I would uh, have said that most customers are just dabbling and the, 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 the real use of the cloud for these, uh, you know, these established companies is uh, in the developer community. And now it's, it's, you know, the CIOs are saying, look, your competitor, he's talk the CIO is uh, saying to the IT department, you know, your competitor is the public cloud. You guys have got to get to the same economics, you've got to get to the same agility and flexibility, and uh, you know, and I'll pay a small premium for on-premise, right? But you know, it can't be it can't be a significant. Maybe double one. or triple. It, <laughs> exactly, and that so that you know, when you're faced with that kind of, it's not you know, the old the old uh, world of IT was you got too many apps, I need less. Just cut the number down, right? I've got too many data centers, you need less. That, that, is, that is the old style of IT. The new style of IT is I need fast and flexible, I need on demand, I need to pay as I go, and I need to have the, uh, the peace of mind that I get on premise. You said something that I agree with, that, that the public cloud is essentially a competitor to internal IT in Correct. the standpoint yeah. of, you've got to model yourself and benchmark yourself after that 
that capability. Do you think that the majority of IT practitioners and organizations accept that, that premise? Well, I, I think it's undeniable, right? I think uh, nobody likes it, right? Because it's even the best run IT shop in the, the old style of IT, that's a very difficult transition. That means thinking very different about your procurement cycles, how do you even match demand to your costs, right? How do you get your workforce able to do that? How do you get your practices able to do that? So it's a huge lift, and that's why this thing is so important for the market. We, we think it's a game changer because it lets these ID departments really adopt in and address that, that need that they're getting, that, remember the, the heartbeat of the IT to the heartbeat of the business. Scott, where, where do you see enterprises um, progressing their cloud strategy um, this year? And then what's different? What do you see out on the horizon? Because obviously we, we mentioned hybrid cloud. You guys are announcing uh, you know, the flexible capacity things here. What is the, um, where do you see the enterprises progressing their cloud strategy right now? Yeah. And uh, what's changing? Uh, every customer that I talk to now is saying, if I haven't built a private cloud yet, I'm building it this year. That's the first part. Second part is everyone's interested in, in understanding how and what and when they can get some of the workloads on the public cloud. And it's interesting because there's a life cycle that occurs. In fact, uh, there are customers who've been doing this and they're actually looking at bringing workloads back as the economic shift, as they realize that, wow, some of these on-premise benefits are necessary for me or my practices are telling me I've got to have some of this back in. So it's, there, again, there's a, there's a maturity curve out there, but I would say, you know, the, wherever, however you would draw it, private cloud is here, for sure. Everyone is either building one or will build one this year. And, uh, and again, it's about where, where can we move certain workloads to the public cloud and, and how can I get that done? Where does hybrid fit into that? Because obviously hybrid's been, the, been all the rage. We heard from yeah. you know, CEO of VMware, yeah. he says it's not a halfway house between you know, getting to no, a private cloud. Is it, <laughs> is, is it real? I mean, is it? <laughs> Absolutely, you know, I say hybrid is a way of life. It's not a halfway house, you know, it's, it's really okay. become a way of life. Yeah, I mean, you know, I use the term halfway house because people <laughs> yeah. felt like that was a, a, a strategy to get to the public cloud when in right, reality, right. public cloud is the halfway house in a way. It, yeah, I, I would agree. Dave, yeah. Dave what's your comment? Well, I, 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 I wanted to, um, I wanted to t ask you that similar question in the context of OpenStack. So strategically, mm -hmm. HP has said, hey, we're putting our muscle behind OpenStack, which right. OpenStack needs. We've observed here in theCUBE that sure. OpenStack needs a steward. You know, <laughs> and, and certainly HP, uh, yeah. IBM, you know, Dell, Rackspace, others, but HP is you know, the biggest company on the planet in IT. So strategically, yeah. you've got to make that move. Yes. But, but but in the developer com community is picking up on it. What are you seeing within the IT practitioner community? I mean, my sense is it's, the uptake is, is obviously less, it's still early days, but, but I, I, are, are people planning to build their, their private cloud and hybrid cloud strategies around OpenStack? Is it still sort of uncertain? What are you seeing there? So we, uh, we wouldn't want to be thought of as uh, maybe the stewards uh, of OpenStack because you know, we believe that this is a truly open uh, participative activity, right? But we are a strong believer and therefore we're a very strong contributor. Yeah, stewards right? are wrong with it. How about yeah. muscle? Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> absolutely, we're, we, we, are, we are absolutely the putting muscle, muscle. And, a, and a lot of investment uh, into right. it. But the point is, is that uh, OpenStack is, is really, you know, it's in the vein, it's in the spirit of everything HP has done through its entire history where we're, we're, a, we're vehemently opposed to the lock-in equation because we believe the competition really has to go into where the IP creation is rather than in the lock-in. And you, you can see that through history. So this is completely consistent with what we've always done and we believe that this is what the industry needs because workload portability ultimately is what's going to unlock the value for these customers. Where they don't have to worry, well gee, today I, I really would love to move this workload but I just can't because of all these reasons that we all know about, right? So OpenStack we think is the great leveler in the market and let's then the, the, uh, the value, the IP, roll into all the pieces that it should be, like the gear itself, like the services, like the apps, and so on. Mm. Yeah. So I got I to gotta wrap this up here. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I want to get you uh, the final word, Scott. Share with the folks <laughs> quickly kind of what's going on in your world. What are some of the announcements? Obviously, just, yeah. you know, just tease out. We talked a little bit about the flexible capacity. What else are you guys doing here in Europe? Right. Talk about the outlook of the business, and uh, sure. we'll, get, we'll end on that note. So, you know, there are pockets of uh, real economic strength in Europe, and there's some places, there's, there's some challenges, of course, and that's, uh, that's kind of true everywhere. What we're seeing is our business is very strong here, 
And uh, in terms of other announcements, um, one of the things that you'll hear about, I think, later this week is something we call hybrid cloud support. So how can you have a hybrid cloud if you don't know who to call when something goes down? And so this is a very big deal for us, and it goes hand in hand with flexible capacity and some of these other cloud announcements that you hear about. So uh, anyway, we'd, uh, we just think it's a, it's a great uh, continent, it's a great market, and, uh, and we're really excited about FY14. Hybrid cloud is a way of life. I just wrote that down. I'm going to make okay. sure that gets into my blog post. Um, we totally agree with you. Uh, yeah. you know, I, I do, do feel that you're going to see the, 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 the confluence of private, hybrid, and public all working together. Yeah. And again, it's all about enterprise grade. So again, thanks for the, thanks for the comments. Sure. Scott Weller, VP and General Manager of HP Technology Services Consulting here. Uh, live at HP Discover in Barcelona, Spain. This is theCUBE, we're on the ground all three days, live wall-to-wall -wall yep. coverage uh, here, documenting HP's uh, uh, fantastic turnaround, great financial performance, congratulations to you guys. Thank you. Chipping away at the, uh, at, at the momentum there, certainly knocking down some of the success on the financial side, and again, you guys have a great cloud strategy, and, and I love the big data momentum, can't wait to talk more about that. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest here, live in Barcelona, uh, here live with Scott Weller, we'll be right back with our next guest.